Next up on my list of top 10 games is my second favorite video game series, Super Mario. There are a lot of different types of Mario games, such as spin-offs like sports games and RPG titles, character spin-off series like Yoshi's Island, Wario Land, Donkey Kong Country, and all these other Mario spin-offs will not be listed here. I'm focusing on the mainline series, specifically the ones that are 2D for now. Later I'd like to do a top 10 for 3D Mario games as these are fantastic games in of themselves. Super Mario games have earned Mario himself a place in millions of homes across the world, so much so that he's just as, if not more recognizable than Mickey Mouse himself. Every mainline 2D entry sports solid gameplay, interesting power-ups and enemies, and very well-designed levels. As with all of my rankings, I've awarded each game with its own rating based on gameplay, visuals, audio, story, and the like. These categories of ranking are weighted. After all, I don't necessarily play a Mario game for its story, but its gameplay, though, is the most important and thus most heavily weighted aspect. Now, let's begin the ranking of this fantastic and memorable series of games. At number 10, we have Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan. Nintendo of America's Howard Phillips thought that this game was too hard for kids in the U.S. to play and instead opted for us to get Super Mario Bros. 2 U.S. instead. Was he right? Well, Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan became available for the first time in the U.S. as Super Mario All-Stars Lost Levels in 1993. And I can tell you it probably still is the hardest 2D Mario game to this day. Some people criticize this game for being too hard and or derivative from the first entry. Perhaps these complaints are true, but the gameplay itself is from the first entry. It's worked so well, so why fix what's not broken? Yes, I know technically there's a bunch of bugs in the first Mario Brothers game, but still. Series creator Shigeru Miyamoto created this game because he was adapting the first entry for the arcades, making small tweaks to the level design of that entry. Motivated to start a game from scratch in this way, Miyamoto was motivated to create the next step from here, thus designing 32 more new levels and this game. A couple of the levels designed are a bit questionable. They require jumping around to look for hidden blocks or a warp pipe that a player wouldn't think would be there. But beating these, though, gave the player a high sense of accomplishment when finally completing the game that was so hard to beat. This was Get Good 20 plus years before the release of the Souls games. At number 9, we have New Super Mario Bros. U. This was a fantastic, albeit somewhat safe, follow up to the previous console's New Super Mario Bros. Wii. It adds in the squirrel suit and some gorgeous levels, such as the painted Swampland. One nice thing with it is that it doesn't require too much of the motion-controlled stuff that the previous Wii version did, although what that game did use of it definitely worked towards its advantage. The optimal version of this game is definitely for the Nintendo Switch, as it includes the new Super Luigi versions of the main game without being paid DLC. Smaller in size due to the 100 second time limit, the levels are still a lot of fun and are based on the ones from the main game. The Switch version loses the 5th person usage of the Wii U gamepad, but this was superfluous at best, as all they really did was add some platforms for the other 4 people to jump on. At number 8 is New Super Mario Bros. 2. This game and New Super Mario Bros. U came out 4 months apart, July 2012 to November 2012 respectively. It's therefore understandable that there was a growing 2D Mario fatigue going on with gamers. Add to that the disappointment for prospective new Wii U owners realizing that new Super Mario Bros. U was going to be a launch title, excitement for 2D Mario games was understandably low. This is unfortunate because new Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS is a fun 2D Mario game with a cool coin collective dynamic. It's essentially Wario Land, except with the greed being a suppressed emotion, versus Wario himself embracing this aspect. Just like any 2D Mario game, this game provides fun levels, a return of the Leaf power-up and Raccoon Mario, and also offers DLC in the form of levels like the Impossible Pack. These levels are by far the hardest 2D Mario levels officially made by the creators, but since they're DLC, the crown for the hardest core 2D Mario is still held by Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan. At number 7 
is Super Mario Bros. 35. Now, I'm a huge Tetris 99 fan, so I felt Nintendo releasing this game as a fun battle royale in celebration of Mario's 35th anniversary was fantastic. Playing through levels of Super Mario Bros. 1 and sending enemies to the other 34 players in hopes their Mario would die was so much fun. One rather large bone to pick with this game was having to play World 1 and 1 over and over and over and over again. This is probably one of the many reasons why Nintendo made this game only available from October 2020 through March 2021. It wasn't meant to be played beyond this six month time period, so therefore they didn't put too much else into it. Though honestly, a little innovation could have seen Nintendo provide a longer lasting product that wouldn't have angered fans so much when they got rid of this. Like them stopping online sales for Super Mario 3D All-Stars, stopping sales of the translated original Famicom Fire Emblem, and so on. Super Mario Bros. 35 could have gotten expanded with more levels, like the entirety of Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan's levels, because after all, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe for the Game Boy Color included the entirety of this game, as did the Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch Nintendo also released for the 35th anniversary for the Mustachioed Plumber. It could have added in Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World versions of it, like how Super Mario Maker has had these built in, but unfortunately Nintendo has done none of this, the game is gone forever, and they once again leave money on the table. At number 6 is Super Mario Land 2, 6 Golden Coins. One of my only gripes with this game is that I felt that overall it was just too easy. The only exception to this is probably the very last level in the game, though the last boss isn't all that difficult himself. Regardless, this is a great sequel to the first Super Mario Land game. The first iteration had some odd physics at time and was entirely too short with only 12 levels. Super Mario Land 2 has 32 total levels. Some of these are entirely unique to the Mario franchise, including Halloween-themed levels, levels where Mario appears extremely small in a house and yard, as well as Mario's first foray into space. This also saw the introduction to Wario for the first time, which ultimately led to his own series of Wario Land games, his appearance in Mario sports titles, and his WarioWare series of games. At number 5 is Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. At this point, most people know that the Super Mario Bros. 2 we got in the U.S. is really an improved and Marioized version of a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic. Still, for an official Nintendo hack, this is a fantastic game. The worlds themselves aren't too unique, because nearly a third of them are desert in nature, for example. This is possibly due to the Arabian ethnicity of the main characters of Doki Doki Panic itself. Most of the levels are fun and maintain the uniqueness that Super Mario Bros. 2 U.S. itself has. This game features character selection of four Mario characters prior to the start of each level, each character with their own unique traits. This allows some replayability to each of the levels, since some characters have a harder or easier time than others completing these. Future Mario games have leaned into these unique characteristics, such as Luigi's higher jump and the princess's floating jump in games like Super Mario 3D World. Yet Nintendo has never made another game quite like Super Mario Bros. 2 US again, and I feel that this was kind of a wasted opportunity. At number 4 is New Super Mario Bros. Wii. This is actually the second 2D Mario in the new series that was started when New Super Mario Bros. originally premiered on the Nintendo DS in 2006. Premiering three years later on a home console for the first time, the Wii version took everything from the DS version and improved upon it. It allowed for multiplayer support for up to four people at once, had some great level design, and had some fun additional suits like the propeller and penguin suits. It did take advantage of the Wii motion controller in more subtle ways, such as with allowing a shake to stutter a fall and controlling certain platforms by turning the controller. I'd argue the suits alone are why this is the best of the four games in the new Super Mario series. The propeller suit is better than the flying squirrel suit because the latter's flight isn't as smooth insofar as being used as an uh-oh button to save oneself. The ability to freeze enemies is handier than the blue shell suit. Is the blue shell suit more fun to try and speed through levels without dying? Sure, but many of the levels aren't meant to be cleared this way beyond being used by expert and speedrun players. New Super Mario Bros. Wii also features the hardest non-DLC level of the new series, which is World 9-7. 
This is a level that features nothing but ice platforms that lead to death as piranha plants spew fire to burn away your footing. A tough but great level in a fantastic game. At number 3 is Super Mario Bros. 1. If you play video games at all today, you have this game to thank. Because it was this and Nintendo that brought home consoles back from the brink of failure from the 1983 video game crash. This is also the very first Mario game on home consoles and was the pack-in game for the original NES. If you compare a gameplay of this to any console released previously, this blows all of those out of the water. For its time, this game was flawless. If you play it today, however, you'll notice a few issues. You can't move back in the stage once you progress forward, and this wasn't added until Super Mario Bros. 3 or the US version of Super Mario Bros. 2. Also, some of Mario's physics feel off if you've only played Mario games released after this. For example, if Mario jumps and moves forward, he has a hard time moving back. Additionally, when Mario jumps on enemies, he doesn't get a lot of height like he would in later games. Mario also can't carry turtle shells like in later games as well. Even with all the gains made at the time, and how rudimentary it may seem to later Mario games, Super Mario Bros. 1 is just plain fun if you can get into it. It's not too difficult, but it's also not a cakewalk, provided you haven't played it a million times like I have. At number 2 is Super Mario Bros. 3. If you take the concept and gameplay from Super Mario Bros. 1 and Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan, the leap that was made to Super Mario Bros. 3 is ridiculously impressive. Mario is given a world map for the first time, and the number of levels increases from 32 to 90. Some downsides to both of these is once you complete a level, you can't access it again, and many of the 90 levels are quite short. These worlds, 8 of them in total, are quite varied. Mario moves from grasslands, desert, water, giant land, sky, ice, pipe, and then fire worlds. Each world has levels tailored to each theme as well. The level design themselves are varied and extremely well done, with difficulty that ramps up very well and fairly as you progress through to later worlds. The number of unique enemies increases greatly, from 16 to 52 when comparing the first Mario Brothers to this one, many with unique traits that match their respective worlds. The number of power-ups has increased greatly as well. Keeping the Fire Flower, it also adds in the Super Leaf to give Mario Raccoon Power. It also adds additional rarer suits like the Frog, Tanuki, and Hammer Brother suits. This game is 2D Mario at its damn near perfection, well deserved to be the best NES game ever released. And finally at number one is Super Mario World. Here are the reasons why Super Mario World is better than Super Mario Bros. 3. The addition of the Cape Feather power-up allowing Mario to fly, the spin jump, longer levels, the ability to save, and last and definitely not least, Yoshi. There are those who could argue quite compellingly that 3 is better than Super Mario World with the fact that 3 has items, mini-games, and multiple suits, whereas Super Mario World has none of these. Super Mario Bros. 3 also has more levels. Compare the 90 there versus the 73 in Super Mario World. My argument is that both of these individuals are correct and that no one is wrong here. After all, both sets of people get two fantastic games. Personally, I happen to fall in the first camp where I believe Super Mario World is better than Super Mario Bros. 3. I also found that Super Mario World's color palette was crisper, the music and sound effects to be higher quality, and secret exits and stuff like the P-Switches were great implementations. I also have a bit of nostalgia goggles with this game. The greatest Christmas present I ever got was when my older brothers and I were given the Super Nintendo when we were kids in 1991. My brother spent the day from then on playing Super Mario World as I watched, and they got up all the way to the fifth world, the Forest of Illusion, that first day. I woke up early the next morning to beat my brothers to the game and started playing it on my own. I started my own save file, got quickly through the first world, then I discovered the Star Road entrance into World 2's Donut Plains. Played through that to reach World 7 Bowser's World Exit, went through Bowser's Castle and successfully beat the game, thus being the first one in our family to do so. Really felt like a passing of the torch moment from my brothers to me for playing video games and it's something I'll never forget. I hope you enjoyed my list of top 10 2D Mario games. 
going forward, I'll most likely explore top tens for 3D Mario games, Legend of Zelda games, and other series. These are always fun to do, and I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did making it. Now, what are your top 2D Mario games? Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, and have a great day.